Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. Lon Paul here with the Permadeath Playthrough Run. We are closing in on about 15 hours of play on this particular run. We're doing pretty darn good. We've completed the Artemis Expedition, as you know. Um, we are in the Autophage uh, playthrough portion of this. We have a lot to do. Uh, for some of you, you may have played through the Artemis uh uh, storyline I can get the word out the Artemis storyline to get you know uh, to get moving along but you'll realize that there's so many different secondary missions here that you could be doing they who returned base computer archives planet distress dreams of the deep we will do dreams of the deep sooner or later uh, that's a kind of a longer playthrough and usually takes well over an hour to get done so we'll, we'll, we'll go through that in one run uh, but later on, we're not going to do that just yet because we're doing dealing with the autophage. So we're going to do that. But also keeping in mind, too, we have the Atlas Pass the path to go through. Um, and that's going to get us our remembrance and uh, things like that. So that's going to be some cool stuff. Now, as I left off in the last um, video, uh, the week, I believe it was on the 10th, if I'm not mistaken, is when that one came out. Um, you're going to see that I have a slightly different ship here now. Um, and one of the other things I'm going to tell you folks is just from this point forward, I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions to some comments people made in regards to this. Now, yes, when I went to the center of the universe, I did not switch out like I should have um, as far as my ship is concerned. I should have gone to a different ship before I jumped through the center of the galaxy, but that would have, requiring, that would have required making sure that ship could do what I needed it to do as well. I didn't mind that. I didn't mind the damage to the ship because I wanted to show you folks what would happen. And I think that's what's important here. Um, anytime you complete the Artemis Expedition, you go to the center of the galaxy, your ship is going to come back damaged. So if you have a second ship in your inventory and you really like the one that you've been flying around, switch to the second ship before you jump. Also, same thing to do with your multi-tool. Switch to a secondary multi-tool. Multi um, something that, you know, obviously you don't care about, you're waiting to trade in or something to that effect. So that way it gets damaged and you can switch back to your main multi-tool and you don't have any problems at that point. So that's also a second thing you, you can do. The third thing, and of course going into this particular menu which shows you Exosuit Starship Multi-Tool, um, the second thing you can do is uh, that, again, let me just cover Starship Multi-Tool, right? Those are the two things you can change around. The one thing you can't is your Exosuit. You can do nothing with this. It's going to get damaged and you're going to have problems with it. So you'll have to have enough supplies to get by in order to repair all that. You'll see that my supplies are okay. I'm low on sodium, sodium nitrate. I've got plenty of carbon and carbon condensed carbon. But see, when I look at this and I say I have plenty, I'm used to my main safe where I literally have uh, containers full of this stuff that I can hit on when I need it. Um, but it's okay. The deuterium is harder to come by because you need a special refiner. You need a, uh, at least at least two slots to refine and get deuterium, um, which you can get now. But you'll notice that my exosuit is full. And I need to really get this area up here where the technology is. I need to fill it out. Uh, another thing we're going to be doing in a lot of these episodes, too, is we're going to be getting more descriptive on things. So that if you're just listening to the episode rather than watching, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, so when I say, oh, look at this, oh, look at that, I'm going to actually tell you what this and that actually are. So it's going to make things a little bit more detailed. So as you may have noticed, uh, looking at the ship very briefly, I did switch out to a different ship. I now have a ship called the Fire. It says it's a B-Class. Um, that's weird because just a moment ago it said it was an A-Class. So I don't quite know what's going on here. Oh, that's my Neutron Probe. That's why. So this is my Atlantid Multi-Tool. Pretty cool looking Multi-Tool if I do say so myself. And it really is very powerful on the laser portion and on the um, bolt caster. So I'm really, really happy with the way this thing's working out. It's pretty powerful. So we're going to be looking forward to that, using that more. But this is just a B-class ship. We are going to get a new ship sooner or later that is going to be uh, uh, hopefully an S-class. I'm looking for an S-class one or one that I can upgrade to that sooner or later. Um, but you can see it's got the Cylon red that's going across it, if you remember Battlestar Galactica. It doesn't go back and forth. It comes from the outside edges and comes towards the center. I really like that red glow that goes across that path. That's pretty cool. Um, and it's kind of got a uh, really sinister look to this ship. I don't know how else to describe it other than that it's just, it's pretty sharp looking. It, it is definitely a hunter style ship here. So anyway, let's continue on with this. We're going to do a couple more missions inside this 
uh, audience with the autophage. We'll get through a couple more, and maybe we'll go ahead and hit another uh, system that has a different ship at it, and we can do a little more looking around. All right, let's head out of here. You can see my anomaly is over there, too, as we were doing things there. All right. All right, here we go. So, next thing we need to do is the autophage. Um, so, this is an undiscovered planet. I probably had looked at it before, but I hadn't landed on it. It's an endless morass. As you can see, there's no water on that planet. We could do things closer to the... Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here occasionally. Sorry about that. I've been getting used to doing uh, speed runs on the redux expeditions and forgetting what I'm doing. So, let's take a quick look around... We got several different planets we can go to here. So let's go into first person view so we can look at our radar. Now we have a lava planet where dissonance is detected. That's that's where we've been discovering ships. We have this endless morass. Uh, let's go over. It looks like there's a planet behind it. Yeah, there is. There is one behind it. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and look at this one. This one is unscanned. Hymo, so cold. Frost crystals on board, dioxide, which is also very handy to have. I got plenty of dioxide, so I'm really not worried about getting more. Um, this ringed planet over here looks like there's a storm going on. Um, noxious fungal mold activated copper. That could come in handy. I don't have activated copper. Let's go ahead and head over there. Now, the system itself, if we go in the menu and go to discoveries, um, is a Corvax system, which is the system you want to be in if you're going to be doing autophage stuff. Let's head over here. Let's go ahead and land on this planet. We haven't been here before. Probably got storms there. We could probably use a couple extra storm crystals. I got five. Um, I don't think... Do I have the warp hyper core? Yeah, I do. I just need to make antimatter. Uh, not that I really need that because I've got plenty of these um, radiant shards in here to power my ship. Um, I'd like to land on the sunny side of the planet, please. So we're going to go over here, rather than the dark side. That'll be close enough. It won't quite be sunset. Let's go back to third person view and take a look. Yeah, we got a storm going on right now, as suspected. And yeah, they do have storm crystals here. All right. Not that we really need them. Um, again, we've got plenty, but it would be nice to have some extra. Yeah. I'm not as concerned. I mean, I'm not going to be in a rush to land here. See? I'm not going to get any anyway. So let's go ahead and just do a quick scan. Let's look for settlements of some sort. It looks like there's one over here. And hopefully as the weather changes here real quick. Oh, we got a landing pad there too. All right, now the weather's cleared. What I'm looking for is those yellow, palish clouds that go around. I don't see anything here. Um, this is looks like a radar station. Let me just go ahead and land anyway. It's got a landing pad. It will save ourselves a little bit of stuff. All right, we are now a, a lumped O30. The Sirox system first contact. Okay, very good. And my toxic protection is falling fast. I can't even imagine what it would have been like during the... Uh, storm. I thought I had that kind of protection. We're going to have to look into it. Oh, it's reinforced. Yep, I'm not going in there. There we go. Wow, yeah, we don't have any uh, that, that kind of protection here. Alright, let's take a look around for... Hmm, I'm beginning to think this is not really the right planet for me. I mean, I'd like to get some activated copper and all. What's my journey milestone? Survived one day on Extreme Worlds. Oh, thank you. That's that's lovely. So there is... Hmm. Okay, there's another landing spot over here. Another settlement of some sort. Let's take a look. It usually has that orange glow smoke around it indicate it might be autophage. Uh, this has not got that, does it? Let's take a look. I'll go ahead and land anyway. Nope, we just got this guy here. Scientist. He happens to be at this empty spot here. Hmm, traveler, you are blah blah blah, life form I will blah blah blah. Seems 
Uh, the core vaccine serenely navigates the terrain here. If they do have a respiratory system, it must be unaffected by this planet's toxic atmosphere. After performing a swift analysis of my equipment, <clears throat> they freely recharge my hazard protection. Leave with thanks. Scientist entity here come, just looks at me expressionlessly. Wasn't that nice? All right. And he did recharge it, but, you know, it's immediately falling again. I'm going to get rid of the living slime on this damaged machinery. And it didn't give me anything. Oh, nanites. There it is. Okay, sorry. Looks like we got some... Uh, technology underground. Buried technology. <clears throat> Salvage data. Looks like we got two of them. Okay. We have some... Condensed carbon up there. Um, but I just ticked off this sentinel dude by collecting it. That's okay. Wow, the toxic protection is terrible here. Alright. Yeah, I think... This is not going to be conducive to doing uh, travel here. So let's get out of this planet. Let's go someplace a little bit more kinder. And we need to upgrade. How, how are we doing on nanites? We got over 3,000. We need to look into that one of these days. Do we have cold protection? Let's see what we got. I don't remember anymore. We have cold. We have, uh, okay, we have nuclear. Good. Water. Gotcha. Fire. So we got the basics, hot, cold, and then we have the nuclear as well. We don't have room for much more, obviously, because we need everything else. But we do have the Artemis Translator. I could probably pull that out. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. I'm not going to I'm not gonna um, dismantle it completely. I'm just going to go ahead and uninstall it and drop it down here. That gives me an extra spot over here <clears throat> in my exosuit and technology. That way I can put another... Um, item over here at some point. You notice this um, underwater oxygen upgrade doesn't really affect anything around it at all. So I'm going to take it and put it over here. That gives me a spot up here. I can put some toxic protection up there sooner or later. So let's go to this unknown planet. Let's see what this is. Frostbound. It's got uh, frost crystal, copper dioxide, magnetized ferrite. Didn't we have another planet like that in the system? Yeah, yeah, I haven't landed there. Yeah, we've got two of these cold planets. That's what it is. We've landed there and we landed here. These two planets. So the noxious one and the lava planet that has dissonance. So we have three unknown planets. Three that we haven't landed on yet. But we've scanned them. So there is the endless morass. And we have this planet here which is 1500 away. Where's the third planet at? I just want to find it. Oh man, those ships popping in just drive me nuts. Okay, there's this one that we're at, and then there's this one over here. Should be right there. There it is. Primal. Salvageable scrap, though, so we can get some more money. Not that we really, really need it. Yeah, 54 million. It's not that we need money. Um, well, you know what? Let's check it. It's unmapped. We'll go ahead and at least land on it and check it out. We're going to keep this one. Normally the episodes are 30 to 45 minutes. We're probably going to go a little longer on this particular episode because of all the searching around we're doing. So, just to keep that in mind. Neat layout in the ship. I like the fact that everything's towards the front of the ship. So that way when I'm in first person view. Uh, we got a pirate wanting to chase us. Do we have any secondary guns? Rocket launcher, sentinel cannon, infra knife. Yeah, it's usually infra knife. And we're going to put this on weapons. Okay, so we diverted power to weapons, and we're going to chase after the bad guy. Ooh, he's really hitting me hard. That's all right. Hang on. And he's gone. We have a secondary one. Infernife accelerator is what we're using. Really could use some upgrades for it to get that thing sped up. Gone. All right, so both of them are gone. And not quite halfway damaged to our shields. Okay, good deal. So where is the planet we were heading towards? Uh, is it this one down here? Uh, no, that's the other one. Uh, where is the... Yep, oh, that, 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 that might be it. Hold on. Right, well, that's the one we're heading towards. Okay. And what do we get in our inventory? Let's see what surprises it gave us. It gave us Gek Relics and Viking Nephrogies. Eh, okay, so be it. <clears throat> Not much, but, you know, it's something.
Now this Hymo planet we're heading to looks like it's got a lot of water on it too. So, opportunity to go underwater if we need to, but I guarantee it's going to be really cold. And you may hear me drinking on occasion. That is just some water to keep myself, keep my voice hydrated, if you will. Alright, yeah, we do have a lot of water. It looks like we're getting towards at least some landmass in between water. So that's good. Alright, let's get out of first person. Back into third person. Okay. Yeah, this will work. So let's get close enough to the planet so we can do a little research. Gosh, I love how fast these ships fly. Wish I had that during the Voyager Redux. That would have made things a little bit quicker. Uh, just scanning and looking for some sort of a base or something. Wow, okay, nothing, huh? Oh, wait, what was that? Slow down. That was an oxygen patch that is literally so large that it can be seen from a couple hundred meters up here. All right, let's land and take a look at it. Because I could use oxygen, you know, and an oxygen patch that big is worth it. Gosh, just a ton of them. All right, I'm not being chased by sentinels, but there are sentinels here, so let's go ahead and harvest these guys. Let's see how much we get. I'm going to take the whole patch. We'll store some in my ship if I have to. We're up to 200. 300. Wow. Quite a patch. Temperature is negative 71. Not bad. This is definitely not a extreme planet, thank heavens. So I'm sure it's going to have some ice storms and stuff like that. Looks like i got one more plant to go. We have 600 so far. There we go. 634. Brilliant. All right. So let's take some of that out. There it is. I got 300 extra. We're going to put that in my ship and call that. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now we did have a deposit nearby. What is that? Cobalt. How are we doing on cobalt? Uh, let's see. 283. We could use a little bit more. We got it. Uh, terrain manipulator. Let's shrink that down. We need about another 200. We'll just go ahead and take it. And, you know, this is something I'm going to advise anybody, even on the beginning uh, normal modes and things like that. Get what you can handle in your inventory and have that handy. You know, um, in your normal mode, you can get <clears throat> up to 9,999. Nine so, go ahead and Pick it all up. You know, keep a full stack. I've got a hundred to go. Let's see. Go ahead and gather up this cobalt and harvest the deposit. I'm picking up a lot of silicate powder, so this is not a pure deposit I've got here, but it's not bad. It's not bad for what I'm needing. Let's see how much did we get. 467. We got 32 to go. And our charge is depleted on that, but that's okay. How much we get? 481. Not bad. Need to recharge it anyway, so let's go ahead and do that. There we go. We also could use silicate powder. Looks like we're a little low on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know my thermal protection is falling. And 11 more. There we go. Ah, got 12. Gosh darn it. <laughs> got one extra. We're going to go ahead and get rid of it. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a wide view, and I'm going to gather up some silicate powder. I need about another 200 of that. All right, how much are we up to here? We're up to 435, another 70 to go. I think we only got about 50 there. Oh, yeah, 488, that's where we're at. Okay, we're good. <clears throat> Not going to get any more of that either. So I'm done there. Um, any other deposits nearby that I can take out uh, let's see copper more copper looks like we got some copper nearby how much copper do we have I don't think we have any and that would probably be my starship anyway oh wow no we got 592 in my ship yeah we're good we're good all right let's recharge my 
uh, cold protection with some dioxide. There we go. And then we're going to go searching for a settlement or a landing spot or anything along those lines that gives us the autophage. Ah, there's one. Let's take a look. Um, it's on an island. I doubt it's going to have anything there. Let me just take a look. We'll get really close and slow. All right. Tell you what. Let's land. There's nothing here, but let's land because it's really... It says the polyphonic core can detect autophage from long distances. Open the multi-tool inventory and scan uh, with locate autophage camp. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and exit. We're going to go into the menu for our multi-tool. You see it's really been pinging this like crazy. So we're going to do that. We're going to tap on it and it's scanning right now. Just like it would when you have a base. It's got a big pull out. Remote autophage signal detected. And that's probably what I should have been doing earlier, right? 20 minutes into the video. And it looks like it's detected one on this planet, not too far away. All right, let's head over there. I'm glad I found that, that patch of oxygen, though. That's really great. Let's head over there. Uh, Ten minutes away. Let's go ahead and go into space. We'll just do a quick pulse jump to it. There we go. Two seconds instead of ten minutes. There we go. And, oh, it's getting sunny. Isn't that nice? I like the colder worlds, especially when doing permadeath runs. Cold or hot. Either one of those two usually do me just fine. So, anyway, um, looks like this one is on top of a hillside. Ah, and you can see it. You can already see the smoke around it. In this case, it's not like a yellowish-orange. It also depends upon the planet. I forgot about that. So, in this case, the planet, when you land... Hey, let's check out the animals, too, while we're here. Let me scan those real quick. No, that's not an AD&D reference, it, uh, ADHD reference. It is just the fact that um, by finding all the animals, you'll get, yep, nanites, two, uh, ah, stupid. I hurt my, my ankles when I landed. Three. There's actually a fourth one over there. Okay, let me just take a look. Got flying ones. I'll grab those. How many are there? I didn't check. Twelve? Okay. This was four. This is five. Docile? Okay, good. So we got five of them already. I guarantee there's at least three or four underwater. I don't see any more around. Hmm. You know, all we need to do is just jump into the Discoveries menu and take a look. Uh, let's see. So we got two more ground. One, two... Whoops, wrong way. Uh, one, two underwater. Three, four underwater. And one underground. So we've got four underwater. One more ground. Two more ground. So two ground. Four underwater. And one underground. That's going to be kind of tough. So we're going to have to find caves if we want to find the rest of them. But we'll get a really good amount of nanites from this, so we kind of want to do that. All right, so we're back over here. Ooh, and this has a cave near it. Just keep your eyes open. Sometimes the cave-dwelling ones, the underground ones, will just appear over here near the caves and not deep inside. All right, so here we are. We're at the... It's got kind of... A, it's, it's a regular, ordinary... Oh, this is a... What do you call it? A beacon. <clears throat> Pardon me. Somehow, in these mornings when I'm recording, my voice gets a little rough. Sorry about that. So it's got this smoke that kind of rotates around it and fluffs around it, and that's when you know this is an autophage camp. So what you want to do is go back to your multi-tool. You're going to have to recharge it, and you need Atlantidium to do that. So make sure you have plenty on hand. I've got over a 1,000, so we should be good. And then you do... Whoops. Then you, all you have to do is scan, just regular scan... Electronic processing unit detected. And you'll see how everything just appears. Whoa. Greet the marked autophage. Now, it looks like the entire camp didn't appear. It looks like we only got part of it. So my suggestion is do another scan. And there it is. You see, this is this unit over here is like a stand-up unit you have at the, uh, 
the uh, abandoned camps where you can where it shows you where you, know, you can get a multi-tool and you can find ships and stuff like that um and that's what we're looking at here so let's let's greet one this is construct digger he is a definitely autophage all the way no we're not going to have all the words so the blank autophage tells me something are a disruptor something we'll see so now we can offer assistance but we don't have the right standing we can present a gift a spool of nano cables which we don't have or we just practice the language let's do practice language and i'm just going to choose something request dialect help uh share their language technology symbol okay we learned the word staff and that's really a handy word we have wow there are five autophage people here okay good salvage construct let's talk to him turns towards me does it seem alien to them now oh uh salvage construct shell turn turns toward me does it seem alien to them new that's weird that's a weird language okay so we're going to practice again we got a blizzard coming great i pause to think and salvage construct alcaca does likewise request dialect help and we're going to learn the aggressive symbol teach me teaches me a word and we got the word pain all right, let's... Oh, and this one's highlighted. So let's talk to Void Seeker X Ballo. The autoface stares at me inquisitively. Though their expression is difficult to read, they do not appear alarmed or even surprised by my approach. Simply curious to see what business I have here. Welcome, pre-built entity. Something, something, that something. I don't read any of that. That sentence. The construction of something technology deserves something. Something be the disruptor. So we're going to show them... The Atlanta Diem, I think, rather than the Harmonizer. So we're going to show the Atlanta Diem. An involuntary shiver runs through the autophage, rattling their cobbled together frame, their limbs of scrap. Blank is the blank shell of the mother. Be something. Oh, it looks like they're warning me. Wish the friendship disruptor. Is it possible? Or a society of cooperation? Yeah, these are broken up sentences, so you're not going to get all the words here. Is work to be done, contribution to be made. Repeat friendship. Lifeform seems amused by my clumsy pronunciation of their language, but appreciative of the effort. Regaining composure, they nod solemnly and present a briefing on a task I might assist with. So I'm getting, I'm, it's just like getting a um, mission from the mission vendor up in the space station or um, from the Nexus. So it has assembly required, it's all purple, planet Natco. Uh, collect four hydraulic wiring. Collect four hydraulic wiring. Void Seeker is giving me this request, and the primary reward is going to be a fiberglass, fiberglass grip blueprint. We get plus two to the auto phase standing. Uh, we'll get the grip that we just mentioned. And we get auto phase words times three. So let's go ahead and start the mission. We just need to make three hydraulic, four hydraulic wirings. Now, because there's a storm going on, we can do it out here. It's negative 43, uh, 143 degrees, but let's see. So we got to make... Where is it? I don't have that recipe. Are you kidding me? All right. Well, that's wonderful. Um, it's going to cost us nanites to get the recipe. So why don't we do this? Let's go up to the space station. Where's my ship? Here we go again, right? It's over here. Behind there. Okay, good. This will always be marked on my map so we can leave and come back. We're going to go up to the Nexus. So I'm going to pull that in and I'm going to leave the atmosphere real quick. And we're going to get... The recipe. See, it says recipe not known. Now, we could go to the space station and buy it. But we really kind of need the recipe. Now, I guarantee you, if we if we finished more of our base, we would probably uh, be getting the recipe. Just a hint. Might want to do your base. I know, I'm telling myself that too. I probably want to complete more of my base in order to get that. But I'm really wanting to do the autophage mission, so... Too bad. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. Not cheat. I'm not cheating. This is not cheating in any any means of the word whatsoever. It is basically just getting the recipe and having to buy it instead of being given it as a free item. So, okay. We are in the anomaly. Do, 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 do. Wait. Boop. Okay, we're running past Nada and Polo and into the back. Uh, 
so you got six terminals here you got your spaceship terminal you got your construct terminal that's for all things constructed as far as base parts and things like that are concerned your exosuit terminal after that and on the right side you've got your exo 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 craft exo craft research terminal the far terminal is your multi-tool research terminal but in between you'll find your synthesis laboratory this is where you get your product recipes so we're going to go ahead and grab that and you'll notice here's our recipes now we've learned a lot over here i've really wanted to get the warp hyper cores for my old ship so that's why that's already been figured out um we would probably get these recipes here if we like i said had done more with our base but i'm going to spend 250 nanites to get the magnetic resonator and the hydraulic wiring because those are really necessary to me we might as well get the quantum computer because that's necessary too later on um, I've noticed that the amino chamber, I don't really use them very often, so I'm not going to worry about the uh, recipe for that. Solar mirror is very handy in a great many constructs, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that too. So I've just spent a thousand nanites on all this here. Um, the only things left in this area are the hydrothermal fuel cell for your underwater craft and your Atlas Pass times three, which you'll get that later on anyway. But if you'll notice that there has a back and forth on here, product recipes, we can go over here and this gives us our valuable products. These are constructed products that you like glass, for instance, you do use and some of these items you use for other things. But most of this stuff is just to create things that are high value, like the heat capacitors and the circuit boards, living glass. These are high value items. When you get down here to the cryo pumps, uh, the superconductor, for instance, this fuser, fusion accelerant. Or better yet, let me go over here. The fusion igniter and the stasis device. Those are worth a lot. A lot of money. A lot of money. I think they're two. I, I want to say they're 50 million or 250 million each. It's a ridiculous amount of money. And you can carry stacks of those. So, you know, wow. Yeah, you can get a lot of money for those. But I'm not interested in that right now. Now, again, I spent a thousand nanites right now. So I'm going to take it over here to the other area on the. When you're facing towards the Twitch vendor to the right side. And I'm going to hit up Ares real quick because hopefully I have enough discoveries to have made up for the amount of nanites I just spent. And you'll see uh, transmit milestone data, number one. You see much, but do you understand? Not for me to know. Please take this. Let's see how much I get. Oh my gosh. I just got 2,350 nanites from him. Wow. All right. Well, that was worth it. Let's hit Helios too. I don't know if he'll give me nanites after that, but let me just check here. Uh, we're going to give him data on Flora. Uh, what did he give me? He doesn't give me as much. Yeah, see, he gave me 45 nanites. Just cheap little bastage there. Yeah, no big deal. Now, you notice we have the Quicksilver vendor. We could go here and get stuff, but I want to play this as much as possible. The only thing I've been getting through the um, Quicksilver vendor has been cosmetic items. Uh, where am I parked? There we go. I've met 40 aliens. Look at that. Yay, achievement made. Okay, back in my ship, we're going to exit the neck, the anomaly and head back down to the surface. Now that we can make them. While we're flying out, let's go ahead and make them. So we need these hydraulic wirings. And what that requires, it requires two carbon nanotubes and 20 salt each to make. So let's get the salt. This planet also has water. So if we look down below, first of all, um, the beacon is highlighted, though it is kind of hard to see. Let me go over here real quick to my log and just make sure it's... Yeah, yeah, okay, we got that going. All right, so we won't be going back there just yet, but we need to hit some water. And you notice we're in the middle of a landmass, so we got water over here and over here. I want to go to daytime side, so I'm going to go there to that section of the planet. And atmosphere. Okay, and you see we got plenty of water nearby here. Yeah, that's will work. This will work fine. So while we're down there... There's some other things we can get. You notice I don't have, like, crystal phosphates uh, or anything like that. Crystal phosphates? Is that the right word? I don't even know. Let's go ahead and land and we'll pick some up. We do need carbon as we go because, as you know, I'm running a little low on carbon. Or I was, anyway. Looks like I've gotten more. Okay, didn't know that. Pure ferrite is a little low. We could use more ferrite. Okay. All right, let's exit the ship. I'm not as worried about the condensed carbon as I thought I was. I'll go ahead and grab it anyway, but we got a sentinel nearby, and I don't think he'll take too kindly to me harvesting it. I just got 
it with the wrong thing. So let me see what else we got. Runic lens. Okay, we'll leave it there. We'll come back for more. We need salt, and for that, we're going to go into the water. And this one is an identified min mineral, but it's got... Secondary element. Let me see what it is. Oxygen. Okay, well, that's all right. And the sentinel's nearby, but it doesn't seem to be too... Okay, that gave me chlorine. Okay, that was the wrong one. <laughs> Let's go ahead and scan them real quick. Chlorine and dihydrogen. All right. So we want the bigger crystals. We do need some... That's chlorine. Chlorine. Salt, that guy. All right. Salt. We'll grab that too. Okay. And are you salt? You're chlorine. We'll go ahead and... Uh, we'll get the chlorine too, because chlorine turns into salt. And you notice that sometimes when you gather these min minerals, you get these little jellyfish-style guys that get upset because they want to protect the elements that you're harvesting. They will attack you. Take them out, unfortunately. They don't give you anything. All right. There we go. Oh, my cold protection's dropped. All right. Let's go ahead and scan some of these creatures. we got four of them underwater that we can scan. That's one. Okay, that's two. Three. Be great if number four was nearby. We could get that knocked out in one shot. We got plants underwater. We don't really get a whole lot for the plants, but we can scan them if we want. That's an oxygen plant, so we can get oxygen from that one when we're underwater. Hey, there's one. And he's a predator, so he's probably going to attack us. It is what it is. Something I've learned regarding the um, pearls that you can get underwater from the clams, the armor clams, you just get right up next to it. You don't even have to go into first-person view. And you can get the living pearl out of it without shooting them. So go ahead and grab those living pearls. Cytophosphate is needed later on. So you grab some because you're going to need some of that later. Um, I should really analyze those because they may be giving me secondary elements. Salt. Go figure. Oh, more of those little jellyfish guys. Okay, we got rid of them. Alright, I want to grab the other things over here from the... It is cyto... I thought it was cytophosphates, but that's not it. Crystallized sulfide. Crystal sulfides, that's it. Crystal sulfides. Since there's some down here, I'm going to grab some. Because, again, that'll be needed later on. We will need those. I'll just store them in my ship for now. And you notice we still don't have a freighter. I'm going to save this for at least an A-class freighter one of these days. I know I'm probably not going to come across an S-class, but I figured I'd try. If you're underwater, you go to these kelps, and you just suck water, suck air out of them. Now, you notice my air protection has dropped, um, so we can either charge it with a life support thing or with oxygen. I'm going to go oxygen, because I've got a little too much. Whoops. Yeah, these guys going to attack me. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these jellyfish dudes. There, got him. Okay, good. All right, and if you look through your... Camera, you can see your armored clams. Again, I'll grab some more. I'm going to grab another pearl. We need more than one. There we go. They don't attack. And do we have anything else around? Crystal sulfides I really need. I get three per. I like to have about nine of them if I can. I mean, we're dear. Yeah, there's, see, there's one over there, and it's not showing up on my radar, on my scanner, that is. Wow, this uh, cold protection doesn't last long, does it? All right, so there's some more crystal down here. Let's go ahead and grab it. And then get away from it before it blows up. There it goes. And we'll take another look around to see if we can find some more. Isn't that the one I was just at? No, it isn't. Okay, so that's another one. Let's go ahead and grab those. Yeah, that's, a, that's another one. Okay, good. This will give me the nine I'm looking for. One, two, 
three and get away. And it blew up. Okay. Looks like we got a couple more clams over here. I want to grab those. Oh, that's another crystal sulfide. And I'm stuck. Alright, we'll grab two. And our water protection, our oxygen has dropped. So we're going to go ahead and use our air again. Oxygen. One. Oh, good. Three clams right next to each other. Excellent. Alright, good. That's plenty of pearls now. Okay. I guess it's a good time to head back to the ship. Um, there's another crystal sulfide there, but we've got how many? We've got 12 of them. I think that's more than enough. What do you think? We've got five pearls. I'd like to grab some more. Not necessarily 12, but having a full stack would be kind of great. I'm just going to stay underwater and I'll use my water jets to head towards these clams over here. There's one. Okay, we've got another pearl. And I'm heading towards the ship, and I'll try to grab clams on the way. Ooh, you know what that is? That's a humming sack underwater. So we got underground stuff here. Uh, that armor clam is really far away. What about you? You're 100 away. Let me grab one more, and then we'll call it. We'll head back to the ship, okay? Oh, it's underground. Never mind. All right, let's skip it. Ooh, we got a head guy down there. Okay. We'll head out of there. All right. So I think that was successful. Let's get our cold protection back up to snuff. Where's that sentinel at? I just don't want to get him angered. Okay, how much do we get? All right, so we got a little extra, more than more than enough carbon. We got enough salt. Let's head over to the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Investigate your brains out there, Mr. Sentinel. What are we doing on dihydrogen? Uh, not too great. I'll go ahead and grab this. I got 57 out of it. That's pretty good. Oh. Well, you know, unburied technology. I'll take that. Thank you. It gave me three. That's not bad. All right, so we're at our ship. Let's go ahead and change everything over to our ship. So we're going to move stuff over here. Um, I'm going to move the pearls over. Crystal sulfides. Uh, we got extra carbon, like I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in my multi-tool. So that I can use it up and get it out of the way. I don't want to take up those spots. Alright, that gets me up to 75 on there. Okay, good. So crystal cytophosphate. So we've got 200 of that. Let's move that over. We've got 100 chlorine, which used to be worth so much at one time. It used to be 600. Now it's only 200. And then we got salt. We've got plenty of salt. So we should be able to make these guys. We just need carbon nanotubes. And since we have plenty of carbon, we need four, right? Okay, good. And then to make these... Oh, it's two each. So we need eight of those. Wow, we just, just ate through all of our carbon. Isn't that great? All right, so what we can do here, let's go ahead and take 125 of that, put that in there. We get 126 because I like even numbers. And then we'll get some extra. Okay. Um, okay, so we can do hydraulic wirings now. It's two carbon nanotubes each, 20 salt, and we have 300 salt, and 40 dihydrogen, which I'm glad we got some more. So two, three, four. So we have four of them. Drop that. Dropped our dihydrogen down to 170. We got plenty of salt to put it in my ship inventory now. And I'm getting a little extra carbon from my refiner by putting condensed carbon in there. We'll get 250 carbon out of it. Why did it stop? That was weird. Okay. Done. So back up to 350 carbon now. Good. Alright. So we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and take off and go to our... We've crafted the four that we need. We're going to head back to... You see if you have the tool icon at the top there. We're going to head back over here. How far away is this? It says three and a half minutes. Still too long. But we shouldn't have to pulse drive. I think we can just head out of the atmosphere and... Down. How long does it seem it's going to take now? A little over a minute. We'll go ahead and pulse drive. Two seconds. Not even. All right. So we'll land on this hillside and we'll go ahead and pick this up. 
we'll complete out this particular mission. And that means we're going to get good standing with the autophage and we're going to start really moving along in the autophage missions. And we'll have a staff by the end of our next episode. All right, you know, notice everything disappears again because we've been gone a while. So just do the scanner and everything reappears. Okay, including the dude we were talking to. So let's go ahead and talk to him. Void Seeker. Okay, and now we can hand it in. So we're handing in the mission and we got our fiberglass grip. Which normally, it, it's basically, it's a blueprint. We need glass, and we need three carbon nanotubes to build it. Plus pure ferrite. Alright, good. And we got three words from the autophage. Our standings increased by two. So, in order to get the others... Here, let's get back into here. Audience with the autophage. Okay, the autophage evidently impressed have gifted a partial schematic for a voltaic staff. Speak to them to learn more. So we're just going to speak to another guy here. Someone that we hopefully... Oh, he's already highlighted. Okay. The autophage seems genuinely pleased to speak with me. They enunciate hmm, their words slowly and clearly, hoping to convey as much meaning as our language barrier will allow. Thank... I think it's thank you. Contribute... Uh, for your contribute contribution... I can't talk anymore. Disruptor. I wish to say thanks... And make this thing of friendship. The blueprint will blank own staff. So I guess he'd give me, he would give me another blueprint. So we're going to ask about the fiberglass grip. That's the only choice we have. The blueprint is an invitation. A blank gift something. A pre-built entity. I are a disruptor. I don't know. There's, there's two sentences there that are completely just gone. Something of a staff. Uh, something technology mini autophage of to build a staff of your own a staff constructed your own is and it's something pre-built i'm guessing he's basically saying you can make the staff your own and it's being gift, gifted to you from context tone and gestures i pick up a few new words the grip schematic i've been gifted seems to form a part pardon me to form part of an important multi-tool a holy multi-tool ask them to repeat that the blueprint is an invitation, a rare gift, something, a entity, something, I, something, are, are, a, are a disruptor. We're going to have him do it again. Is of a staff, an important, holy technology, many autophage, most of something to build a staff of something own. A staff constructed, you notice there's more words now, own is rebuilt multi-tool. The autophage obliges, repeating their words exactly. I can find I find I can piece together a little more of their meaning this time. So basically what you're doing here is you're learning more words. And you're learning through talking back and forth of what they're saying. So now you see almost everything. Autophage are not like Corvax. Something are many. Something do not like converge to one. So they they he's saying we don't have a convergence. Uh, if something to accept my invitation, if you are to accept my invitation. Something, something, travel. Something of something have made. So we're going to leave now. I gather that this grip blueprint is an uncommon gift to an outsider. A significant gesture. The beginning of acceptance. Divergent construct Ulf encourages me to travel and meet more of the autophage. Perhaps a complete fiber fiberglass grip built by my own hands will make a positive impression on the next camp I visit. Alright, so we need to build this. Now I think we can still build glass. We don't have it in our inventory, obviously. But if we go to our personal refiner and we put some silicone, uh, where is it here? Silicate powder in there. I'm just going to put half of that in. We only need one, so just bring it down. And it takes, how many is it? 40? Yeah, 40 silicate to make one glass. But it's a lot quicker to make than to get frost crystals. But you need hazmat gauntlets to get. And while you can gather it and harvest it, it still requires a lot to make. So now we have the glass. To make the fiberglass grip, we also need three carbon nanotubes. We're running low on carbon, so we've got to be careful here. One, two, three. And you'll see we were down to 200 carbon, but now we can make the grip. Grip is made. So we got the music indicating we're done. Now, if you go to this computer terminal over here that I was mentioning earlier... You can exchange void motes, or you can assemble a staff. Now, I don't have all the tools to assemble a staff, but if we go to exchange void motes, you can buy stuff. You can get rebuilt exosuit modules to increase your exosuit, um, increase your exosuit usually in life support. So that's great, because it gets added into the Sentinel ones as well. So you can have three of these in there. But they're 430 void motes. I've only got 242. 
I can buy repair kits here. And I can get all these salvaged, uh, you notice that all, everything says I'd already owned. These are all the uh, uh, facades, salvaged facial unit, re repurposed casing, summoner's headgear, things like that. The reason why these show already owned is because on my main save, I've already purchased these. So they automatically become available to you in all your saves that you create, even a new game like this one. So you'll see all of them are already owned. I've got the auto face headscarf and the elaborate wrap, which I've not redeemed. And everything else is going to be your multi-tool uh, staff parts, which are about 333 through 1200 void motes. And there's some more of the already owned construct portions. So I haven't gotten these two head scarves or wraps yet, but I can do them because they're ready to redeem. I just have to redeem them. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one and grab one. So now they're already in there. It didn't cost me anything to get those. So they're redeemed and available to all of my saves. Excellent. So, and the other thing that you could go to is staff assembly, which is this area, and you put your components in here. You have a head component, core component, pole component. You notice that all we have is the fiberglass grip for pole component. We have no core, and we have no head. Okay? So, we'll do that later. All right, so I'm going to call an end to this episode. We've gone about 50 minutes into this one. So, we're going to go ahead and call it, and I will keep looking for animals because I've got, how many of them do I have now? Nine of the 12, so I need, I think I got all the underwater ones, right? And we need two more ground and one underground. Yes, and that's it. So I want to see if I can find them. I would love to get the underground one sooner or later because that's going to be usually the tough one to find. Um, and usually by now when you hang around a cave long enough, it would have appeared, but it may have already filled in the area with all the animals that you're allowed to see here. So, I don't know why there's a deployed navigation marker over there. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Oh, I'm with my ship. Let's get rid of that. Point straight at it. There we go. Gone. Okay, we got a blizzard coming in too. So, this is a good time to end this episode. Okay, folks. I want to thank you again for watching. Please hit the like and please subscribe. We should be hopefully over a thousand by now. We are so close. We had like six this morning when I checked and uh, to go. So I don't know. And that I'm recording this on the, it's funny. We're recording this on the 6th of January and I've got six people to go to get to a thousand. Oh my gosh. We're so close. But anyway, um, thank you again for watching and we will see you all in the next episode. And uh, wait, got to get my wave in. There we go. Take care, everybody. Thank you again.